Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello, everyone. It's Cornelia Stephanie here on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Today, I have an exciting uh, lineup of guests. My first guest today is Marjorie Haddad. She's currently joining us from Israel. And it's our first person from Israel. We have a lot of people join us from around the world, but this is the first for Israel. So I want to thank you for joining us from there at 10 o'clock at night. And that just hello. To- <laughs> hello. Hello. Uh, let me let me first tell the audience a little bit about you, uh, Marjorie Haddad. You are a global public relations uh, expert, the author of an award-winning international number one bestseller, The Power of PR Parenting, and, a, and an award-winning TV producer, as well as a speaker on how to use public relation practices at home to help make parenting easier. Our kids to thrive and our world a kinder, more respectful place. You hold, Marjorie, a BS in broadcast journalism and an MA in international relations, both from Boston University, both from the Boston University. You're married and you are the mother of three grown children. You live in Israel and also the United States. Welcome to today's show. Thank you so very much. So happy to be with everyone. It's so great to have you because you have a very important message for the future leaders, which is is all of us, but in particularly the children uh, of today's world that will be rising into adults and uh, continuing on the legacy that they want to live and create here on this planet. So you want to talk about your your uh, passion project, your book, and your forward, forward movement with what, what it is that you are inspiring everyone to join. The movement is called the PR Parenting Movement, and the book is called The Power of PR Parenting, which means ultimately applying public relations strategies, practices, and tactics to parenting and to helping our children be the best that they can be, gaining confidence, resilience, and experiencing some level of success along the way. And like you said, as parents and mentors, teachers, guidance counselors, what we say to our kids stays with our kids, just like it did with us. We remember what our parents, grandparents, and mentors and guidance counselors said to us, and it probably stays with all of us until this day. Wouldn't it be nice if what we were carrying and sending along with our children were positive reinforcement messages to help them believe in themselves, especially when they mess up? Hey, you know what? It's okay. Try it again. Do the best you can practice, eventually you'll get there. And even if you're not going to be an Olympian or a Broadway star, guess what? You had the experience. You can take that with you wherever you go and apply that to other things. So what you're saying is we're talking about uh, speaking to your children, to your family members, your children in particular, with compassion, with kindness and love rather than the critical person or uh, I don't know, what is that? It's just a mean, mean person that if, if you know, you, you, you want to be, you want to treat your children how you would want to be treated. Let's take it even a step further. When we're yeah. at the office, okay, we are respectful to our colleagues, to our clients, to our partners, to our bosses. Mm-hmm. And even if we disagree, we find a nice way to share our discontent. 
when we come home, we need to do the same. Remembering that our children are ultimately our customers and we're customer service. And we need to be kind and respectful. And if something doesn't go quite well, then rather than pointing out the negatives, say, well, you know what? This is one way to do it. May I show you another way? And then demonstrate, guide, show the way, and then have your child practice along with you. This way they learn. They don't dwell on what didn't work out. They're focused on the things that will help the, help the issue to work out, help the challenge, overcome the challenge, and eventually do it even better, or maybe just differently. Because sometimes it's not a matter of good or bad. It's just a matter of doing something differently. And not everything's a straight line. There are lots of zigzags in life. That makes the journey even more interesting. And that's one of the wonderful things that we have in life is the journey and the experiences that we have along the way until we reach that ultimate goal. Yeah, I think this is a really critical time period for because there's so much disconnection happening, you know, for parents and also for children. You were telling me a story in the green room before we came on. Uh, what mm -hmm. happened? You were in a park and you saw a person. Uh, you know, give us that example of uh, you know an example <laughs> of what actually happens out there. This is actually a couple of weeks ago. I was in Austria and we were in the park and there was an English speaking grandmother with her, I believe it was her daughter. And they were with a young child, probably around 10 or a little bit younger. And she was berating him for not eating his banana mm -hmm. and instead holding the banana. And she went off on him. Not only that, but very loudly. I wasn't very close to this woman and I could still hear her and she caught my attention and she went on and on and on. And the kid just stood there, didn't say a word, just listened. And then she finally said, all right, take that banana, go over there and eat it. And don't come back until you're finished. I thought, my goodness, this poor child is going to take that experience with him throughout life. Hopefully he won't pass it on in that same dramatic expression of his grandmother. I'm assuming it was his grandmother. And the next child will have to, unfortunately, perhaps, I don't know this to be true, but perhaps experience the same once this young man grows up to be an adult and he pays it forward. So it's very important for us to understand that however we are treating our kids, they're going to take it with them like we have and pass it forward. And if we can do our best to make it a positive experience, listen, we're all human. We're all not 100%, 100% of the time. I totally get that. But if we can catch ourselves in the middle, turn it around and make it into something positive and maybe even apologize. Hey, that's okay. Sorry, I lost it. I didn't mean to. You're okay. Let's see how we can redirect and do better together. Yeah, I, because I was going to ask you, where can people begin right now? And, you know, let's just say there is like a that type of a relationship going on. And the best place you just answered the question is to apologize, even for saying, you know, I'm sorry, how things have been between us. I'm sorry how I've treated you. I'm sorry that I haven't been um, softer or sweeter or kinder with you. You deserve that. And I want us to begin again with a clean slate. I'm going to do better. And uh, I think that's that's a wonderful way. You have your book behind you. Can you hold it up more close to the camera and read what it says on the outside of the book? It says the power of PR parenting, how to raise confident, resilient, and successful children using public relations strategies it's published by Muse Literary out of Chicago. So where can people find the book right now? You can find the book anywhere, <laughs> but I'll make it easy for you. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, just 
plug it in and Am on Amazon or Barnes and Noble and the book will come up. If you just plug the name into any kind of search engine, it will also come up. It's all over the place. And you can also reach out to me at PR F O R period life. PR for life. You spell out the four. And you can learn more about the movement, join the movement, and ask any questions you want because we're all in this together. And if I can be of any assistance or help, it would be my absolute pleasure. That's wonderful. Now, do you are you on social media as well, like anywhere on Facebook or Instagram or short answer, yes. <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Wherever you'd like to follow me, I invite you to, if you're an Instagram person, at Margie Haddad. Margie with the J. <laughs> M-A-R-J-I-E-H-A-D-A-D. -A -A That's beautiful. So what is the vision? What is your vision in moving forward in the movement that you are creating, have created with this fabulous uh, book and uh, you know communication with what you're doing? What is the vision? How do you foresee this playing out? I would love to see the PR parenting movement grow and to have thousands, millions join the community and to start the dialogue and to continue the dialogue and to help each other and say, you know, this is the case scenario at home. What in this book or what in this philosophy would you suggest I do in order to get through this very difficult challenge, whether it's at work, with the kids, with your partner, with somebody external? Ultimately, this boils down to how we communicate, not only to ourselves, but to the people that we interact with every day. And ultimately, most importantly, our children. Because the ultimate goal of the PR parenting movement is to create a kinder, more respectful world where, where diversity is celebrated rather than feared, where we accept ourselves for who we are when we just do the best that we can, and that we're kind to each other. And if that's something that we can achieve together, I think we would be in a much nicer world, the kind of world that I'd like to live in anyway, and that I would love my children and grandchildren and so forth to live in. The kind of world that we're creating. I absolutely uh, endorse this movement. And so thank you so much, Marjorie, the dad, for coming on the Cornelia Stephanie show. We're going to take a break right now. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in. My next guest today is Dr. Joy Vaughn. She's a native of Barbados and Dr. Joy Vaughn, Dr. Joy brings a unique and diverse set of educational, practical and professional experiences to the issues that, that often negatively impact people at some point in their lives and careers. After a near fatal accident ended her uh, career as an occupational therapist, she reinvented herself as a brain and behavior coach who specializes in the neurocognitive training of groups and individuals. She's a former Florida International University and Broward College professor and a world traveler. Dr. Vaughn's forte is helping her clients reinvent themselves and be resilient. Her unique individual and group neurocognitive training shifts her clients' behaviors one neuron at a time. Dr. Vaughn holds a master's degree in special education, neuropsychology, and a doctorate in education and brain-based learning. She enjoys supporting others to think and live outside of the box and being a Nana. She's the author of Powerful People, Powerful Lives, the Seven Steps Empowerment Series for the Spectacular and Christian Souls and the Art of Resil Resilience. Phoenix's rising. Wow. Welcome to the show today, Dr. Vaughn. Gee, thank you so much, Cornelia, for having me. I've been looking forward to this like a kid looks forward to Christmas. Oh, that's so good. It's wonderful to have this space created for amazing people like yourself that are here to inspire the audience mm -hmm. with what you are 
passionate about with what your message is. And you were talking to me earlier about how you are focused on uh, inspiring people to reinvent themselves because that is the story that of what you did with yourself. Would you like to go into that story? Yes, I was at all, I love my mom. So she passed way too early, mm. at 43. I think I was about 13 then. Mm. But you know, she just poured the wisdom of the ages into me before she transitioned. She says, Joy, you know, the one thing I want you to remember is that you must plan your life in decades and reinvent yourself every five years. Now, why is that important? She says, because number one, it keeps you current. Number two, it keeps you vibrant and alive. And number three, you'll never have to want for anything. I love that. I'm actually writing that down. I've never heard that. Plan your life in decades. I've never heard that. And reinvent yourself every five years. That's really good. So I've had a lot of reinventions in my life, sometimes forced um, and sometimes volunteered. Um, I guess my first major reinvention, I've always been an avid lover of the brain. Yes. And I remember starting out my journey. I'm originally from Barbados. So the first reinvention was just coming here to America where they told me, Cornelia, that the streets were paved with gold. I have not found any yet, but I'm still looking. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. And so having done that, I started on my trajectory as to what would really light me up. What, what do I really, what's my passion? And it's true, it was really healing. Now, I love crafts, particularly basket weaving. But since there wasn't a long line for basket weaving jobs, I reinvented myself as an occupational therapist because that profession allowed me to use crafts to heal, strengthen the muscles of the hands and so forth. So I was able to combine what I love with actually a real mission, which is to heal people with all kinds of diseases and, and strokes and mental health issues. And because occupational therapy is a broad base mm. of conversation. So you're able to, um, to do that. And I got a scholarship to Columbia University in New York. And that set me on my trajectory of um, my reinvention plan. Did occupational therapy for a while, went back home to Barbados, and then came back and found myself in the world of children, mm. healing children, and also home care. It was a new field that was opening up. It's the first time that you could actually make a living going into somebody's homes, doing the therapy, and then, you know, actually getting paid very well for it. So I was able to combine that in Chinatown in New York with acupuncturists. And together we worked to heal patients who had strokes. So they would do the acupuncture and I would do the exercises. And we found a probably 50 to 75% return of the extremity. And that was really, really exciting. And that's when I knew that you could tap into the brain and make something happen on a very real level. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, let's see, I was doing occupational therapy for a while. Things were going well. Of course, I was married. And, you know, marriage is marriage until it's not. Again, reinvent, pivot. And then I did something that I thought was wise. But Cornelia, it wasn't so wise in the aftermath. So I went to get my wisdom teeth out. It was four nurses and myself, different dentists. And I ended up having fibromyalgia and RA and being semi-paralyzed, having to fight my way back. Mm -hmm. That was the end of my career as an occupational therapist. So what do you do? You write about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you reinvent yourself as an author and a writer. And slowly and surely, just being able to write about the experience helped me to heal. So oh, yeah. <laughs> you could understand that, yeah? Yeah. 
there's power in the written word and there's healing in the written word. And so it was really great to be able to now establish myself as an author and a published author and a self-published author because um, the world of publishing has changed. If you're not Beyonce or Jay-Z, you know, you have to kind of do it yourself. Yeah. So I <laughs> to reinvent myself as a one-time packager of graphic artists and learn all about that. I was able to actually teach that to people and help them publish their books, which morphed into being a teacher. And so I ended up teaching at the colleges like you read. And then I figured, okay, it's time. I should really do something else in my life. And I think I was in my late 50s, 60s. When I went back and got my doctorate, I finished what I started. And that was to do a study with college students who were failing and to see if the intervention would actually shift their brain patterns and have them be successful. And it did. And they were able to graduate from college. Now, these were first time in college students, minorities who really and truly were destined or deemed to drop out of. But then I keep track of them and once in a while, they're all doing remarkably well because of the intervention. I don't know if you've heard of Landmark Education. Oh, yeah. Do, yeah. So I ended up being a seminar leader for Landmark Education and really absorbing that. And that's what helped me to be able to heal and to walk again, constantly just getting rid of the stuff, whatever that is, and being able to see a future and a purpose that was way beyond what I could ever imagine. Um, I have died and come back and that was exciting i didn't want to come back but they said i had to come back uh and throughout the whole journey it's just been great to come up to now in a series of reinventions that each one has built on the other and built and you don't see it happening but it's a stepping stone to where god is taking you next and you just have to follow the yellow brick road cornelia yeah, I love I love all of this. I definitely want to have you come back for a future longer discussion and uh, hear more and go, go more in depth with you. How can people find you right now, look you up on social media and also, uh, you know, work with you if they choose to? I, I don't know. Do you do one on one sessions? Is that what I you do one on one and I do group sessions. OK, I, so I, how, can, how can people find you? Um, You go to. I'll put it up in the chat, but it's www.drjoycoaching.com. Okay, Dr. Yeah. Joy Coaching. For those of you that are listening and driving, that's why it's important to uh, speak it out. Yes, it's drjoycoaching.com, not .net, .com. Yeah. And that you'll be able to find me there. Uh, we are having a business resilience summit because God has laid on my heart coming out of the pandemic. A lot of business, as you know, are in different right. places, but to help them be able to reinvent themselves and yeah. to be resilient, because it's not about reinvention, Cornelia. That's just the first step. Yeah. The second step is to be resilient. And the third step is to be able to sustain that, resi that resilience. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I just want to thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, Dr. Joy Vaughn, it's amazing having you on and hearing your story. Thank you for what you're doing out there in the world and for choosing to stay here and that you didn't die and that you're carrying on your amazing legacy. Thank you so much. Thank We're you. going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I am so excited to introduce you to our next guest, Helen Snell. Helen uses her experience as a storyteller and certified communication coach to develop biographies and profiles, web contact, content, marketing materials, blogs, and books. She also teaches the structure of clear communication and storytelling in workshops for those who want to master their writing craft. She understands that you are your brand. 
She's an international best-selling author and speaker. Many of her stories come from parenting her three children, being in nature, and being mastered by her dogs. Her audacious dreams include writing a book series for special needs adults and living on a sustainable property. Welcome to the show today, Helen Snell. I am so excited to be here with you. So how did you get into this business? This is an interesting story. I um, <laughs> come from a long line of happily employed people and I um, I'm the first in my family really to be an entrepreneur and didn't enter the entrepreneurial field um, until I found myself uh, separated. And with three children, the youngest of whom has special needs, I knew I needed to figure things out a little differently than just going to a nine to five job. And English was always, uh, you know, I was one of those few kids who loved Shakespeare in high school, um, <laughs> always loved English, always loved writing and stories, especially stories, and never really thought of myself going that way in my career, but found as I entered the entrepreneurial space that finding my own story was actually really relevant to my branding and that then kind of grew into doing that for other people. So it's been really a fun journey. So one of your main uh, words that you're using in your in your bio is communication and how important yes. it is uh, to communicate. So do you want to tie into that? Yeah, for sure. So one of one of the things that I really prize pride myself on in my writing work is the ability to communicate messages effectively. So, you know, when someone is um, developing their personal brand content or writing a story, you need to be able to reach a wide variety of people. We all communicate differently, which means we also listen differently because that's part of communication. And a lot of that skill developed in me through my parenting, for example, having my youngest having special needs, for example, I had to um, take everything in communication down to its most finite form. What's the smallest step? What's the smallest part of that word? How is the simplest way to get this messaging across for her to be able to learn and thrive? Um, and then I found the same, just discovering my own story. How do I share that with the world? What are different words and different ways that I can use to do that? And so being certified now as a communication coach, uh, certainly has helped me in my own growth, but helps me to be able to do that for others as well. Yeah, I think that's really brilliant how you had to listen and focus on very, very small amounts of steps to take in communication, because a big part of our communication is also being able to listen. Uh, right? big, bigger than speaking. Bigger than speaking. <laughs> so what would you say? Is that like 95% or something? Uh, no, the, so the statistics are, I mean, one of the fun things I like to tell people is we have two ears and one mouth, so you should listen twice as much as you speak. But statistics on communication are that um, I think it's around 85% of our, um, our communication is nonverbal. So that can be listening, it can be how you dress, it can be how you how you sit, it can be um, the clothes that you wear, you know, uh, all sorts of things actually project something to the world about you without you even speaking. Right, right. So mm -hmm. definitely something for the audience, for those of you that are entrepreneurs or wherever you are in your communication, to really give that some thought about how are you communicating that 85% of your energy in in uh, the way that you relate to the world, the way that you, uh, you know, meet your clients, the way that you s communicate with your children, uh, all of that is so important. I love how you brought it all into storytelling and also branding. And, you know, I, I help a lot of entrepreneurs. I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs and always let them know that you are the media, you are the business. And you said you are the brand. And Absolutely. So you're putting out there, right? That is representing what it is that you're messaging, what your message is, what you're selling to the world. Yes. And I, I think that's one of the things people get confused with. They, 
you know, uh, want to buy a package of, you know, here's a bunch of social media templates you can use for the next, you know, 365 days, or this is what your website needs to look like, or something that someone is trying to sell you, <clears throat> pardon me, or convince you is the way to go to business. And I'm not saying that that's wrong, but it might not be right for you. Um, so if someone's website looks a certain way, or they have a certain tonality to how they present, that might not work for you because you are just as unique as your, your thumbprint, right? And so one of the things I love to share with people on social media is just show up and be yourself. You don't, you don't have to put out salesy language. You don't have to follow some strategy to try and get, you know, X number of, of viewers. You want real authentic relationships on your social media. And the best way to do that is to show up as you tell a story. Um, about what happened to you yesterday, make an analogy between, you know, training a new dog and how that how that relates to your business or whatever it might be that that is going to connect to who you are. And, and also equally important is connect to who that client avatar is, you need to know who they are as well to know how to connect with them and uh, deliver what it is that they need from you, how you can how you can give and support them. Yeah. So when you, I like, I like that. So when you're putting out your social media, be authentic in your expression about what happened to you, how you're living your life, what this person said, or how this showed up in your life or whatever. And mm -hmm. then are you at any point in time putting a message underneath there that says, if you want to work with me, la la la. For sure. And again, I, my personality is, I don't believe in doing that all the time because I don't, I don't like to always push the sale. I like to push the relationship, but I think every now and then you have to let people know what you do. Yeah. Um, and whether it's connect with me on a, a, you know, a direct message or whatever, one of the things I, I really inspire people to do is try to ask a question or do something that's going to get engagement on your post. So it doesn't have to be, Hey, you know, click this link and buy my program. It could be, ask a question about what something you've said. Do you relate to this or do you have an example so that you ha can actually start a conversation with people? This is all such good advice. Let's give people while they're listening so they can, I'm going to follow you on social media. I want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, I want to engage with you. So uh, let people know where they can find you on social media. Sure. So Instagram and Facebook is where I show up most of the time. You can find me under Helen Harwood Snell. That's actually the name of my business. I'm on LinkedIn as well, and I'm working towards being more proficient at LinkedIn, but I'm, I don't show up there all the time. So if you want to find me regularly, I actually do a something called Tuesday Tales, where I show up live at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday night, and I share a story, something that's happened in my life or something on the news, and I relate it to three or four different types of businesses so people can see how you can tell a story for your business based on an event that's happened in your life and how that might be used in a sales conversation or um, something similar so that you're you're getting used to using those those ideas of things that happen in your life regularly. Yeah, that's really great. That's also uh, wonderful that you're offering a consistent place for people to tune into you and and you know develop their their business and get tips and tricks and ideas and uh, vision from you as well. So, um, are you currently working with individuals one on one, or do you work with groups, or how do you work with people? Uh, so typically I do work one-on-one -on -one where I help people. Um, I just got off a call before this where I'm helping someone develop new language for her LinkedIn profile. She's changing her business. So we're coming up with a new biography, her, you know, tagline on LinkedIn, her, her, um, her short description of her business, all that sort of thing. Um, but I also do love to work with groups. And so one of the things that listeners can find uh, in the, the link for this show is I have a free five-day social media storytelling challenge. And that links you into a Facebook group where I am. This is a new thing I've just started, but I'm building a community of storytellers there. So we can be connected and learn together there as well in a that's group. So, that's so great. Just so you know, uh, Helen, the link that you use to promote this show is the same replay link as well. So just so that you know when you're promoting this again next week, where people Excellent. can 
to you being interviewed here. That was, that's so great. Well, I definitely know I'm going to see you again because uh, who knows, we're going to be collaborating and telling stories and doing all kinds of fabulous things together. And I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. I thank you. And I look forward to doing some more things with you, Cornelia. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. My next guest is Jenny Lee. She's a teacher of 20 years. She's inspired to help caretakers to be aware of their own self-care after a realization of how her own lack of self-care had put her down the wrong path. After a few taxing life events, years of self-separation, postpartum depression, and divorce, life directed her on the path of self-care and self-discovery. She uncovered her connection to happiness and inspiration through her morning routines and self-care embodiment. Jenny is now on the journey of guiding others to heal and reconnect with their dignified and highest selves through morning rituals and self-care. Welcome to the show today, Jenny Lee. Thank you so much, Cornelia. I'm so excited to be here. So tell us about what was it that you were doing before? Mm, okay, so before, I, I have always been a teacher. Um, but life, well, not but. I think it's just natural for everyone to come to a change in life. And I became a mother. Um, and that got me, and it made me realize that becoming a mother is really a continuance of my previous life. The energy that I was living in, we just always hustle, 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 and forget about my own self-care. And um, that happiness is at the bottom of the list. My self-care is at the bottom of the list because everybody else is more important than me. Right? So that's what happened. But uh, being a mother got me to realize that this is not the right thing to do because I was so depleted. I was emotionally um, not taken care of. So I became depressed. Um, and that led to my relationships with everybody else around me crumbled. Um, and, and my marriage that you know, it led to a divorce. And it was only when I uh, moved out from the house, from, from uh, the house that the family used to live in. And um, I got a split uh, custody with my ex-husband. And that's when I got a couple of days to sit with myself and realized that, oh, wow. Um, well, at first it was more like, I don't have anybody to take care of. Like, what am I supposed to do with my free time? <laughs> then I, I started to do things that I actually liked. And that led to, well, long, long story short, that led to me discovering when I wake up earlier I have more time for myself um even you know even though my my child is there right um I would wake up say half an hour earlier and I would dance to a couple of songs um and actually there was a, a place where I did not like working at and that really brought my energy down and brought my mood down because it was really draining but on the days when I danced, when I meditated, when I took care of myself and ground uh, the, the, the joyful energy, I would go to work and I would not be as stressed anymore. Um, I was not as reactive anymore. And anybody could say anything to me and, hmm, really. And I noticed the, the, the reaction compared to before I started the self-care in the morning routine. I remember how reactive I was more and, you know, like how, how people get easily um, triggered by, I don't know, road rage. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how I was. And um, now, you know, the, the environment is really the same. I'm still teaching in an urban high school, but I am much happier. I have better relationships with my students and I have better relationships with my friends, you know, which before I did not have. And I, well, I guess I'm sorry, short, I have a more regulated nervous system, which dictates my, um, 
let me see. This, uh, it helps me respond to the world more positively. So yeah, that's uh, the outline, I guess. <laughs> wow, that's quite a journey. You know, what really struck me when you said after, you know, after you had um, went through the divorce and then you had split custody and all of that. And then all of a sudden you were by yourself. And then you said, well, what am I supposed to be doing now? Because you are always focused on, you know, helping or doing for other people, never focused on what do I like? What gives me pleasure? What do I enjoy doing? And I love how you, uh, you know, make the focus, the joy, uh, and that naturally uh, regulates your nervous system because you're focusing on you and what makes you feel good. And then you're living in that environment, creating that environment and making that your daily life, your daily momentum. Mm -hmm. and, right. So you are a, a joyful individual that is walking around uh, teaching and doing things. Um, and it doesn't mean that you don't have your challenges. You do. But because of your ritual, because of your practice, it helps regulate you and gives you joy. Is that right? Oh, very much. Very much so. Um, because... If you actually think about it, a lot of people, um, you know, we are so used to blaming, right? Okay, I feel this way because my outside environment is like this. I, I feel this way because he did this to me or she did this to me. But what if, what if when we change our inner environment, um, getting ourselves used to and accustomed uh, with positive energy, um, and keep on feeding ourselves with the most positive things that we can, um, then we would have a different perspective of other people's actions, right? Because we will have power over our own emotions and we would, we would realize, you know, in a deeper level that we are the ones who have control of our own emotions. And so it shouldn't matter, say we have this bad traffic and uh, other drivers are assholes, you know, when you're in peace, when you're already happy and grounded in your own joy, okay, you know, that's not me, it's them, right? And you could then find ways to, um, say, enjoy your time uh, when you're in a situation that you don't like, or there has to be something that, um, you know, some ways where you could find a lesson, Right, because things do happen, but um, when you actually look at, so when you are more in joy and you are uh, grounded in your own peace, instead of um, looking to blame, you would look for opportunities in any kind of situation, right? Yeah. And so this traffic, all right, I'll be stuck here for an hour. What can I do instead of? oh, this is killing me, right? Ah, I, I could listen to a good uh, audiobook. I could dance, <laughs> you know, to some music. So how do, you, how do you make that an opportunity? It's always the question when you're, when you're light, when you feel light, when you feel like, you know, you have power over your emotions, yeah. right? Um, it's, it's always that. And, um, but it does take a lot of work and practice. Um, and so that's why I emphasize the morning routine because when you wake up when you first wake up in the morning your brain is the cleanest slate it's between that brain wave of delta and uh, theta uh, when you first wake up you know you're not thinking of anything and theta is that uh, wave when uh, you're groggy and so the first thought that you think of when you first wake up like maybe oh I'm going to have fun this morning it's going to grow into this fun and, you know, positive and fun tree during the day. But when you wake up and the first thought that you think of is problems from yesterday <laughs> or some blame, it's going, it's not going to be a nice tree throughout the day. And so, yeah, why do that to yourself, right? And so yeah, I'm so glad, I'm so glad you're out there teaching. I'm so glad you're out there teaching and talking about this. Such an important example. It's such a personal tool like you called it earlier the, the the tool in your toolbox let's let the audience know where they can look you up and find you on social media or how they can learn more about what you do yeah absolutely um so on, on instagram 
I'm at Sunny Jenny Lee and on uh, Facebook. I'm also on Facebook, but you know, whatever um, details, uh, social media details that you'd like, I will send it to you so you can have it on your show notes. Yeah, the, the best thing to do, Jenny, is, you know, while we're talking here, because people are listening, driving to this podcast, they're listening, yeah. and they need to know. So basically, even in when you're promoting uh, the show next week is put it underneath in the comment section uh, where people can follow you, put mm -hmm. it underneath, then that way it's there. So um, yeah. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. And I appreciate Let's see. I appreciate you coming on and inspiring us. Oh, she has you. Our producer has you on the Facebook screen event. She has your your information on the page. Sierra, you are so wonderful. Thank you so much for helping us spread her joy, uh, Jenny Lee's joy around the world. So I want to thank everybody for listening and tuning into the show today. We'll see you again next Friday. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Jenny Lee. Bye. You've been listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com. <laughs>